export an HTML file, that is the same static view, except the image doesn't work because that's in a subdirectory and it's not that. But um, but otherwise works the same way. Um, so it's quite nice and clean way of comprehensively getting around them that diddly wiki big and you know doesn't work as an email attachment as we we're discussing with bmp um but also isn't a fair thing to ask people to check into from their mobile phone you know, that kind of thing so is it it's not mobile no i'm saying it is i'm saying this is because the website the web page is so much um yeah, exactly. uh, less to download yeah that it's um it's a much more reasonable um so it's good that it still it still doesn't address your final point and your response about now we need to leave space because all these um the more intensive use cases absolutely all require a robust server side for multiple people to well, use no no not all um or a management process so it could be the TV desktop, you know. So you might have it. Might yeah. be the, you need an editor. Yeah. And um, and imagine the desktop gone. So and for BMP, um, you you happen to have um, someone there who's willing to do it and who's new and not tied to the old institutional ways, um, and who's partly whose hiring was premised on the fact that she brings that to the foundation. She brings a new digital way of thinking. This is all- um, Which, uh, and Albert's clearly very sympathetic to that too. Yes, but in other words, he gets it, he knows what he wants, but he, beyond that, he couldn't voice it. Hmm. And so- No, his, his job is to encourage Addy to deliver that stuff, but he definitely yeah. seems to know it when he sees it. Yes, and to move the sort of to, to move the needle on that whole information management, which you know it was it was these conversations around the funeral was really what it was interesting because that's where you see people and you know you end up talking to them in a open well oh, what are you doing kind of thing and so I um, had two of those conversations and plus Addie's and plus it was with with the foundation president. Again, you don't know this, right? But, um, yeah. but it was all in the, the problem set was all the same. You know, the problems that they were having in converting the organizational information or data for some of them into information and then turning that information to knowledge that they can manipulate on the fly and represent and reuse. You know, it's, it's reduce, reuse, recycle sort of for information. And, and the, the ability to connect and have some transparency for the entire information flow is really, it seems to be like a common theme. And that's what the TW stuff does. So, um, yeah, I, I think it's, um, the opportunities are there and everybody seems to have the same idea. So I was kind of, in, I just found it really interesting discussions. Um, so anyway, yeah, this looks really cool. What's the, this is just based on tags and stuff. Um, no, in fact, it, it, um, it's dumping every, all tiddlers out that are non-system tiddlers. So I quite like that very simple thing where you don't even tag content to say I'm a bit of content, uh, just it's anything that's not a system. It's ordered um, alphabetically with an exception to make hello there at the top. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Automatically, alphabetically. Yeah, the others are um, alphabetical order after, after that. Yeah. Um, those are those are tagged. Um, so hello there, and if we go here, um, uh, agenda etc. is tagged with the system tag main menu. So let's. What's the? Where's the TW view? Sort of the app view in TW. Yeah. So this is the wiki view, and this is the static HTML view. Yeah. So the wiki view. Yeah. So, so there, there we can see tags, like the main well, menu tag that's making but, the but, things. Yeah, so, so go back to the default wiki view, not the, the sort yeah, of... Yeah, this is it. Oh, um... You know how it would open for some... Yeah, like that one, right? And then they all... And those are the ones that are open, and you set that. But um, without the sidebar... Because I always... I yeah, well, I mean... 
we we can um the part part of the the reason why i didn't do it like this is partly because i want it to look different by in the case of the wiki view it needs to make a virtue of the fact that it's a wiki and do yeah. the, an interact wiki and do the things because because that that kind of information rich um display is the kind of thing that's better done in in the pure html version sure um but i'm i'm enjoying playing again with this thing yes i think that's very cool um yeah okay i was just thinking back to the bmp um project where there's something this is a little much for them but not necessarily but one of the things that they're still they're still i think in a oh i like that yeah it's fun isn't it um, yeah. The, so the thing, the thing, every list is that sort of fan separation. I could run that against any list of tiddlers. Um, yes, you could. So actually, first, previous, next, last could expand to have that many buttons. Um, you you could do that. Yeah. So the in in the introduction edition, um, uh, which is. Uh, is that right in this guy there's um there's the same thing um which is here that's an embedded um uh an embedded story view so if i turn in here if i put it back to the normal uh snow white theme Oh, I don't know why I haven't got. Oh God, no, I haven't got any buttons. But anyway, yeah, um, you can see I've how that's that, done. By the way, basically, by the way, I thought that was me. There's something going on in the palettes and the buttons. Uh, well, no, all it is is I need to go to Control Panel, maddeningly, and turn them all back on again. Um, so the, this is packed with the um, uh, everything. No, disabled. I meant the palette. The palette. I've, my buttons have been disappearing when I linger over them. I, something changed in palettes. Oh, I, I don't. Oh, I see. Uh, it might be me. It might not be. But I just noticed the same thing just happened to you. Um, well, oh. no. Here it is definitely just that they were hidden. Yeah. The okay. Okay. Um, but anyway, um, so yes, that kind of fan view can, can be embedded inside a tiddler. Because for the. Um, to just switch gears to the photo wiki thread that we've been running. Okay. If they have 20,000 photographs, first, previous, next, last isn't very fine grained. So you want to be able to go 10 back, 20 back, 50 back, because they're going to be come in some order. And as they put them in order, they begin to make little sets. Some, I've got that sort of working so that I don't know, but that's really helpful. I'll have to do, do you see what I mean about being able to navigate. Yeah. yeah. The, the 20,000 image thing is interesting because that's a lot of images. Yes. So um, it would take uh, just making a thing that lets you scroll through thumbnails of all of those images would take a surprising amount of engineering, mm -hmm. um, which is good. It's an opportunity. <laughs> yeah. Um, and very doable. I mean, um, but I know that, that, you know, that just that basic browse functionality and things like Google Photos is quite carefully engineered to not overload the browser by ever actually displaying 20,000 images, that kind of thing. So but how about if you did it as an app? Um, the, at, at the moment, we'd do the app within a browser, so mm -hmm. it would kind of come to the same thing. So if you um, but still if you just if you downloaded it, but you're saying even browsing twenty thousand images, it, it has nothing to do with internet connectivity. It's just the ability to browse that many images. Absolutely, it's just the amount of stuff sloshing around inside the browser, and it's not insoluble. It's just that at that kind of um, volume, naive ways of doing it don't work as effectively right. as they do if you're sort of you know a few thousand images. And it's probably borderline if they're on fast machines, even quite. Um, you know, brute force things um, sometimes do work. It depends a bit whether mobile is an important use case for them. 
But do, do you know, I think the, the capturing part is quite interesting. Having the online surveys that I've done in the past, and I do, do occasionally do them, are very kind of crude, mainframey experiences. Um, and if we didn't, ha- if we didn't have the saving problem, which we can get around by wrapping it up as an app, totally wiki is quite good for that kind of thing. Sort of gradually getting the prompting the user to gradually disclose more and more information in a kind of dynamic dialogue that's determined by the information the user enters, giving them some freedom to jump around to. Um, review the information that they've entered and to correct it and add to it and so on. So um, yeah, I, I, I wasn't thinking along those lines at all. That that space seems to be sort of hyper competitive, the online form space. Um, and it's got its they mostly they mostly use really crappy ones. I mean they, they the ones that, that I've actually get set by big airlines and so on are pretty poor tech. Which suggests that that well anyway they did some yeah, yeah. yeah agreed yeah but uh, but the immediate opportunity is that they're they're going to generate survey data with images right but uh, do they have a tool for taking the surveys then yes I, I believe so yeah I think they're very close to being in the field yes they okay. they're using Cloudinary for image storage so they've already solved the image storage problem which is a, one of the fundamental I just played with it for twenty minutes today and said well how do you store images how do you get links to images so they, and she told me that they're using cloudinary which i've played with once or twice and um so that mean that tells me they're in the field yeah, yeah yeah that's great yeah it's so they must have something that's good awesome, yeah. and you can tag in cloudinary and you can you can gen it, i couldn't figure out how to generate an api but i'm sure there's an api to it there's an api i'm just looking yeah yeah okay that's pretty cool and so the idea then of being able to like, so this is, the, this is the thing that she described to me. I don't know if I got it quite in words, but they're having consumers take very, very detailed surveys of how they clean their houses and take pictures of the rooms. Mm. And they, you know, with brands and market segments, and it's a marketing survey. So they're going to have a whole, sur- the consumer's going to fill out a detailed survey and take pictures. And they want to be able, I, I don't know what they're doing, but they sort of want to be able to browse these, pictures like oh let me show me all the 24 year old women who use Clorox to clean their cat box on Tuesdays level of detail so that's cool you know sort of it's a drill and kill kind of thing um, and then the idea of the cross tab do you, do you do SPSS or you ever do social science cross tabs to see what we, you know what cross tabs are right from yeah, but I know what you, I think I, I could both what it meant yeah yeah it's a it's like a rows and columns percentage table, and you usually use it mm. to generate statistically relevant results. And it will tell you that you know forty five percent of Trump vote, forty five percent of Trump tweets are negative compared to twenty percent of Hillary's tweets, or something like that. Um, but what you'd want to be able to do is from that cell, click on any one of those cells and say, "Show me the actual cases that satisfy these criteria." And um, I've seen that in Tiddly Wiki before. I've never executed it, so. But um, and then you can do three-way cross tabs and n-way cross tabs and also and they she got all sides. So anyway, so I think that's a very cool thing. Is cloud? Um, it's also that there's a um, there's a very hypertexty way of doing it. So some people see things like SPSS as um, I don't know being Excel-like, um, yes. where you make things. Yes. Whereas the hypertext people would see all of those reports as always being there in a space that you navigate around. And um, I, I am interested in that distinction. We can do both, of course, but um, yeah. uh, you know what I mean? And I think that's what's most interesting is that we can do both because I've not, unless there might be some new visualization tools in SPSS now, there probably are. It's been a while since I've used it, but um, but they're very statistically oriented mm. and mm. barely do they, do they invite users to look at the cases, you know, visually and to see exactly what we're talking about here. So, um, and the idea of, um, like if you ran a cross tab table, um, just, yeah, just search for cross tab table. 
SPSS. Mm. SPSS. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. No. Exactly that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, and you do see you see versions of this that I find quite fiddly, where you sort of select select things that then have X's on so that you can cancel them. And I'm quite interested in a navigational metaphor as an alternative. Yeah. So go to that cross tab again. That that's yeah, right. This kind of this is the old school. Yes. Way of presenting a UI for this stuff. Yeah, but then what you'd do is you'd click on um, that one. You'd click you'd click on the two hundred and six, and you'd have those two hundred and six images that you could then view. Or there's just a next, you know, there's a slideshow in that cell. Hmm. That would be the um, that would be interesting. Yeah, and again, I'd see that as that that two hundred and six. So is a group defined as you know, female slash clerical or something. Yes, exactly. Um, and uh, interested in things like making it so that you can navigate that, so that we create um, tiddlers dynamically yes. um, from their names. Which is essentially what we were doing in the early days of BMP by running against domain tags and subdomain tags. That's right. And we can pre-create all of these tiddlers with the right titles and then write okay. macros that generate navigation between them. Yes. Um, and any one of those are navigable at some level. So, yeah, so that's the, but the, the, the advance is putting the images in the cells. Hmm. So then, and, go ahead. And that um, uh, presumably one of the things that they want to do is to figure out which cross tabs are interesting views of the data or use the tool to figure out which cross tabs are interesting yeah exactly yes. Because, yeah yes yeah. That's right, right so it's an exploratory data analysis with a visual for somebody who's visual um you could also use it to, you could also use it to generate pieces of art and the i think the what's interesting is that the, seriously actually there's an art component to the hypertext conference last year that I didn't get to submit to. But what's interesting is that the, those different slideshows um, for anthropologists become part of their data. So part of their yeah. presentation. So yeah, so anyway, so that's the, uh, um, that I just, that was that part. So um, I, well, I think the fact, looking at Cloudinary, um, They've got quite nice things that like you can construct URLs that give you images at various sizes. They've got face detection and a few bits like that that, oh, that would actually be cool. would hugely simple. So things like we can generate thumbnails automatically, therefore. Um, so that's good. Um, I must buzz off fairly imminently. I'm going yeah. to be around tomorrow. And okay, then... so I think we covered a lot of it. I just want to leave you with one piece that wasn't in, in the written part. Um, yeah. So BMP needs project management software. Mm, yes. <laughs> um, and so uh, their analyst, whoever that might be, um, has looked at all sorts of different ones and can't find anything. And the last, I sent her to look at Microsoft Project last <laughs> over the weekend. It's terrible, but it's, but I think, you know, there's, there's a whole, there's a, there's a TiddlyWiki GTD stuff. And I think integrating a project management layer on top of a document production layer would be a really interesting case study there. And it would mm. get, it would get her into writing in TiddlyWiki sort of natively, which I've seen her write for her whole life. And she's like a native. Someday you'll see yeah. her. She does it in writing and handwriting, but um, she could do it easily. So anyway, so that's a thought. I don't know. I just thought you might mention that along the way. Well, it, it, it coincides with, um, you know, the conclusion of our thread, which is it so Addy how easy it would be to write this stuff natively. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it is interesting. Um, and I, if you do that, I suggest starting her on Tiddly web. Um, yeah. I don't use because I just haven't integrated it to my workflow. And at this point it's my whole yeah. workflow in Tiddly world is a total mess and disaster. 
I know, I'm worried about that. I, um, because Tiddly Web is, is not entirely ready for prime time. Okay. Um, but Tiddly Desktop might be... Might That's be what ready. I meant, Tiddly Desktop. Okay, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, I've got, I finally got 5.1.12 out today. I saw um, that today. I, I, I with, went to Tiddly Web. My new habit is to use tiddlywiki.com and I create test tiddlers in it to see if things work. Yeah. And it works yeah. very nicely. And I said, oh, new version. <laughs> so it's great. Yeah. So congratulations on that. And um, okay, great. So we'll, we'll be in touch and we'll see what goes on. Well, yeah, Pep, well, Pep, um, I, I haven't heard in the last 24 hours from Addy and Co, but I'll right. certainly be chasing them um, for when they get into work tomorrow or something. Yeah. If I haven't heard from Cheers, Steve. Thanks very much and enjoying the discussion. Cheers. Bye. Yep.